and welcome to this tutorial for creating map art. To begin, we're going to need to make the schematic to use to create the map art in game. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to make those schematics and also how to build them in game. You first want to go to this website, repain2001.com slash mapartcraft. I will leave a link in the description and we're going to need to set this up first before we can do anything with it. Uh, first, we're going to need to make a preset. This basically gives us which blocks we're going to use to create the map in game, which is on this section on the side. There's a few uh, default options and we're just going to go with none for now and then we can either pick which uh, blocks we want to use manually or you can use my preset preset down here uh, which I will link in the description as well basically this uses the easiest types of blocks um, to build with and to break afterwards when you want to pick your blocks for a map art you're going to need to think about how hard it's going to be to break down afterwards. So most of these blocks are insta break with tools and with haste beacons and such. I won't go through that on this video, but you can go through them all yourself if you want to. The only things I'm going to point out specifically are use mushroom stems instead of cobwebs, do not use water, and stick with concrete powder instead of wool, as concrete powder is, as I said, insta-break. Next, we're going to go to the settings section. Now, the first thing you want to want to do is turn staircasing off. Staircasing makes uh, really nice images, but it's also incredibly difficult and time consuming, and you want to save that for a very special project. Once that is done, you can now select your image by just clicking on pick image here and then it will bring you to your folders to upload an image. It will give you a preview like this. If you want to make it a larger map, so like a 2x2, two two, you can go to map size and increase it and it will fill based on uh, the image size. So if you make it longer, it's going to crop the sides out. Or if you make it shorter, it's going to uh, crop the top and bottom. Okay, so let's go with two by two. And the next thing you're going to notice is the materials on the side. Now you want to click this little button here, and that will show the maximum amount of the of the materials you're going to need to build this map art. So if you're just starting out making map art, um, you'll want to collect these materials first before you decide to build it physically. And then once we are done with this and we're happy, uh, we're going to download as one by one split which basically splits the map into separate sections. So instead of having the map all in one schematic, it's in four different schematics. Before we move on, I just want to go over a couple of settings on here. Um, add blocks under just adds like a layer of like cobblestone underneath. You can turn this off, you don't need it. And also there are options for changing the image. If something isn't coming out properly, you can try the different types to see if it improves the image at all. Oh. Best one for this sort of image is the default one. Uh, the other types are better for like two or three tone colors that are like quite blocky. And there's also image processing, which you can change the brightness of contrast and you can just change it so it works out better. I recommend doing this if details aren't coming out very well, especially with lighter maps. Um, and you can just play around with it and then if it doesn't work out you can just disable it. And 
that is about it for that. I also recommend saving this image to keep for reference and keep it in the same folder as your uh, map art files so that it's easier to find later and you can rebuild it another day if you want to like on another map. The next step in this process is saving your schematic files to your schematics folder. The easiest way to find your schematics folder is to go to your profile and then click open folder and that will bring up the, it's not shown on the screen here, but it will come up with the main folder for your client and in that main folder is a folder called schematics. You simply drop your schematics in there. You can add extra folders if you want to in there. I recommend doing that because otherwise it gets very messy very quickly. Now, once you're in game, you're going to want to load that schematic. To do that, press the M button to load this menu up. Something I forgot to mention earlier is that you're going to want to unzip that zip folder that you downloaded before you try and load the schematic. Once you've got the menu open, you click on load schematics and this will come up with your schematics folder. Now you're going to want to go to the folder that you've made previously, click the first schematic, load it and it will come up a bit like this. Now obviously this is in the wrong place so we get our stick in schematic placement mode and then place it where it needs to go. I keep this nice little nook here so it goes right in the right place every time. Now this is going to be, now you can start building your map art. It's quite easy to fill in most of this but sometimes you'll struggle to find where the blocks are when you've finished most of it and you're trying to find those last few blocks. What do you do? There is a way to find those specific blocks that you've missed. Now, I believe the default key is M, hold M and then press V, but I've changed the um, key bind to the plus button on the number pad because it's right next to my mouse and thus really easy to open with a single click. Now you, when you open this you click start verification and this scans the entire map and sees what you placed and what you haven't placed. And then we go to missing blocks and personally I click count twice to make it to file it up in place. So say you've placed pretty much everything and you've got this one oak planks that you can't find anywhere. You simply click on it and then, oh well look, there it is. It's highlighted, so you can easily find it and place the block you've missed. It also helps you keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done. So personally, I start from the bottom, do the most blocks first, and work up the list until the last few. Now you're probably wondering why there's a length of cobblestone here. It is because when you place blocks on a map, if you place them one higher than the rest of them, it creates like a gradient. And obviously, if you have a gradient all the way at top of the top of the map, it's going to create a line called a, we call it a noob line. And obviously you don't want that. You'll end up with lines between your maps. So you just put this length of cobblestone down and leave it there and that fixes that issue. Okay, say you finished your map art. Now I've just placed a few blocks here just to, just so there's something on the map to show you. You're going to want to generate your map and make sure it's completely generated. So you have to jump, go right into the middle. And then you're going to want to get a glass pane, go to your cartography table, put your map in, put the glass pane in, and that locks the map. Now what this does is that I can now remove these blocks. 
and when I open this map, they're still there. So it saves your map so that you don't overwrite it later when you do a new map. On altitude, we have an extra step, which is to save the map art again. But this time, instead of just locking the map, it stops other people from copying the map. So that is just map art save. Now I'm not going to do that because it costs me money. <laughs> it costs $2,000 in game cash uh, to save the map. But only do that if you're planning on selling it or giving it away so that people can't make copies. Speaking of making copies, to do that, we just get some empty maps, throw the maps in the cartography table and just keep throwing them in and it'll make more and more until you've got as many as you want. And that about covers it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Please consider liking and subscribing, but no pressure if you don't want to. And see you next time. Bye.